Hello everyone and welcome to another how-to video. Uh, my name is Ola Draper, CTO for COP. Uh, now we've done a fair few previous videos on how to commission access control terminals. Uh, we wire these to mag locks and you use the credential to use your card or your face to make a face rec read or pin number to gain access to the door. Now a lot of these times what we're seeing is we've been using the onboard device relay. That's where the relay, i.e. the switch that opens the door, is in the device itself. Now, the problem that can occur is if this is on a, a public setting somewhere, uh, and it's wired to a mag lock, and don't forget how a mag lock works. It has to apply power to the lock to keep it locked, but then when power is disconnected, i.e. the switch turns off inside the device, it releases the door. Now, if someone was to rip this off the wall, um, then of course power will be disconnected in mag lock, and someone can get in. So, how do we get around this? Well, we use something called a secure module. This is a little device that you install on the secure side of the building and you wire your locking mechanism to this device. So the idea being is when your uh, credentials are entered in this device here, this device sends a command to this device to open the door. Therefore, if someone smashes this device off the wall, this device hasn't received a command to open the door, therefore the door will remain shut. Um, so what we'll do, we'll take a look at how we wire in a secure module into the maglock and also wire it back to our access terminal and commission the access terminal to tell it to open the door through the secure module. Okay, so let's see what we're working with here. Uh, what we've got here is our access terminal. Uh, this device requires a power supply to it, 12 volt power, and a network connection in order to dial into the device to commission it. Now this device does have the facility to, as I mentioned earlier, to connect it directly to the lock itself using these wires that we've got uh, here. Um, however, we're not going to use those wires. We're going to be using these ones here, which is the RS485, this is our communication wire, which we need to wire back to our secure module. This device also has an option for WeGand out. This is where we could wire this into a third party controller should we want to. Um, but we're not going to use those either. So the only wires we're concerned with on this device is of course our power, network and the RS485. So what I'll do, I'm just going to take back all these wires just so we don't overcomplicate things. Okay, then wires are now secured back there. We'll just tape this to the back of the unit just for the time being, just to get them out of the way. Um, so as we can see here, network point, 4 watt power and our RS485. That is all we're concerned with. So let's take a look at the secure module itself. So this is our secure module, which you would install on the secure side of the building. Um, the only light you get on these new ones now, on the 061s, is a power light. The predecessor to the 060s had a range of different lights down there, giving you different statuses. But on this one now, you just get the one power light. So let's just turn this over and take a look at the side. So I'll just flip this around so we can see. Um, so what we've got here, we've got our terminal port there, which is what our cable's going to go into, which will go back to our lock and our RS-45. And then we've got a set of dip switches, which is what we apply depending on what method we're using. So we use dip switches one to three for our RS-485 to give it the right address. And the final dip switch number four, which is right in there, I'll just hold a bit closer so you can see, dip switch four is for the WeGand protocol. So if it's down, it's accepting WeGand in. If it's up, it's WeGand out. Um, now in this situation, we're not using WeGand, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we are just gonna use the dip switches one to three there. Uh, now, for our situation, we're going to use dip switch 1 because it's going back to one device, and that's the address for this device is going to be address number 1. So dip switch 1 is now applied. What we need to do now, though, is connecting our cable that comes with this device. Now, as you can see, there are quite a lot of wires that come off this device. So what we'll do, first of all, let's just get the ribbon cable uh, plugged in to start with. So that's in there. And then we've got all these cables that come off the back. So... Again, we're not interested in all these cables because we don't need all of these functionalities. Now, of course, we have our 12 volt uh, power, which we need to obviously power the actual device itself. We've got our RS485, the yellow and blue, which is going to go back to our terminal. Uh, and then we've got all of our wires that go to our locking mechanisms, including exit buttons uh, as well. This device also has the fire alarm relay as well, which are just currently joined together just to complete that circuit. So what we'll do, we'll get rid of all these wires that we're not really interested in for today, and we'll just take a closer look. Okay, so the only wires we're seeing now are the ones that we're interested in for today for wiring our secure module to the maglock and also to the access terminal. So first of all, it is worth noting, we need to obviously apply power to our secure module. So we've got our red and our black, so our red for our 12 positive and black for our ground. 
Um, so I'm just going to use uh, basic cable connectors today, just these little things. It's entirely up to self what sort of cable connector to use. Because we obviously use these for training purposes and demo purposes, we use these because we can easily remove them uh, afterwards. So I've got another 12 volt adapter that I'm using here. In reality, this would probably be going back to a 12 volt power supply unit with a backup battery. Uh, but for today, we're just making it nice and simple. Um, so I'm going to put my uh, red into there. That's now clamped down into there. And then we also want power uh, going to, or 12 volt power, should I say, going to the actual secure module itself. So that's wired in now. That's all good. Now, as well, we're also going to need uh, 12 volt power going to our maglock. So we just run a cable between our main power supply, or in this case, our 12 volt power supply, should I say, uh, which is the positive, which goes into V positive on our mag. So we'll put our red into there as well. And then the other end, we're going to wire it into our V positive on our mag. Okay, now that's in place. Uh, if we go back to our mag, so what we got now, obviously we've got power going up into here, obviously going to our uh, secure module, and power is also going to the mag lock. And of course, we need uh, the ground to come out, which goes back to the negative supply of our power supply unit. So if we just start by putting a cable uh, into the uh, V negative on our mag lock. Now, we're not going to run this, of course, straight to the uh, ground, because all that would do is constantly energize this and never release the door. So, we use a switching mechanism. In this case, our switching mechanism is our secure module. So, that's going to go back to the white and purple wire. So, we need to join these two together. So, again, we're just using a cable connector for these. So, V negative out of our mag which goes into the white and purple of our secure module. Okay. Now, of course, we haven't completed the circuit yet, because if we look at the positive, positive goes into here, into the mag, out of the mag, into our secure module, but there's no circuit coming out. That's where we use the white and yellow wire, which goes back to ground. So again, another cable connector we're going to use. We just pop this one into another cable connector. And that goes back to our ground. Now, of course, the only final one we need is the ground wire, which is obviously part of the power supply unit for the actual secure module itself. So now that's widening in place, all we've got to do now is join the yellow and blue, which is our RS-45 negative and positive, to the yellow and blue of our access terminal. So let's join them together. So, blue to blue, and yellow. to yellow. So now they're in, let's put the power supply to each one. Again, it is worth noting that this device should have its own power supply, as this should. What you don't want is someone to break this unit off, which has obviously got the power there, and then it'll disrupt the power, which is also supplying the secure module. That will defeat the point. So each device should require its own 12 volt power supply and backup battery. So let's put the power into these two devices. Okay, so now the entire system is uh, powered up. We've got uh, our flink, blinking light on our access terminal. We've got our red light on our maglock, say that this power, the device is energized but the uh, door's not closed, so again, that'll be a green light, and we've got our power supply on there. So if I make this on here now, as we can see, we've now got the green light on, so that is now shut, and I can't move that mag. So what happens now if I try to open the door? So I'm going to use an access credential. We've already got this uh, set up from earlier on. This is where we used uh, our uh, Hype Connect Teams uh, uh, application to actually commission the access terminal 
If you are interested in that, go to the link in the top corner and it shows you how to commission an access terminal using HitConnect Teams. But for this purposes, this one's got a QR code reader. I've got a QR code here, so theoretically I should be able to open the door. Authenticated. But it said authenticated, but the light's still on and that's still shut. So that is not doing anything. Why? Because currently by default, it's triggering the relay in the terminal itself. It's not sending the command to this device and telling this to open the door. So we do need to log into this device and commission the RS485 to tell it that it's connected to a secure module. So what we'll do, let's get a network cable into there and we'll dial into the device and take a look how we set that up. Okay, so as you can see on screen now, I'm using the Hike Partner Pro uh, app. Uh, I've got the, uh, I can see the device in front of me there. So if I just click on the device itself to go into the settings, tell me all about the device, click on the cog there, and this now puts us into the settings of the access terminal itself. Now the bit we're interested in is where it says at the bottom there, access control. So if I click on access control, and it tells me things such as the authentication settings, the door parameters, how long it opens the door for, how long it's going to be open and shutting for. Um, but what we're interested in is the RS485. Now we can see it's currently turned on, but if you look at peripheral type, it's saying card reader. In other words, it's saying, oh, you're connecting a card reader to the access terminal. That's where you could do a card read out, for example. But we're not using a card reader, we're using a secure module. So we change the peripheral from card reader to control unit and click OK. As soon as I click save, the actual terminal will need to reboot to save these settings. So now we click save, it's asking me that I've got a reboot, click OK, and now we wait. Okay, so we got the click there, it's now being energized, got the sound on there to tell me that's now rebooted. So if I go to my uh, application now with my QR code, we try my QR code now to open the door after that device is rebooted, and let's see what happens. Authenticated. Got the click, that has now opened, and that's now released the door, red light back on, door gets shut again, green light on, that is now secure. Use my QR code to open the door on this device. Authenticated. Got the click. And that is now releasing the door from the secure module. There we go, everyone. That is how you wire in a height vision secure module unit into an access control terminal. Uh, now, as I mentioned, it doesn't have to be uh, just this particular access terminal. It could be any access terminal where the device has got onboard device relay. That could be these ones. It could be the 805, the slim version one. Uh, it could even be the facial recognition terminals as well. Anywhere where you're concerned about using onboard device relay and someone vandalizes and breaking in, this is where you use this secure module. Uh, now, if you are interested in device, uh, go to the link below. Uh, the uh, link is there for that device itself. I'll turn to speak to our sales team. They've got all the information about these devices as well. Uh, now, as always, if you did like the video, please do uh, leave a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, if you hit that bell icon, you'll be able to upload any new videos.